Welcome back. Today I'm going to be hopefully finishing the assembly of this Rotax 500cc uh, twin. It's a 493 series engine, so early 2000s. I will definitely be showing you how to put the pistons on and the cylinders on the engine. And we'll talk about base gasket a little bit and uh, kind of my theory on it. One of the first things I haven't really talked about in the videos that I've been doing with these yet is you want to keep this entire assembly clean while you're reassembling it. In fact, you will you should spend more time cleaning than actually wrenching if you're putting an engine together right. Now, um, I've got some rag stuffed in here, and I've got some rag stuffed down into that, and that is because as I try to install this ring, I don't have the factory, they have a cool tool that actually lets this thing slide down in, and the ring goes into the piston pretty easy. I don't have that. So this is going to be a nightmare. It's probably going to go flying at least once. But I'll show you kind of how I'm going to work it in there. So that is why I've done this. So if this does go flying, it doesn't fall down into the crankshaft or into the water pump passages. Now, in the one of the last... In one of my other videos, I showed you how to size your ring and install the opposite side circlip without that tool. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to hang the piston on the rod. And like I said, I didn't, I did not do the cleaning on camera, but I have a lot of time in cleaning and oiling this, this engine up as, uh, well, primarily cleaning, but a little bit of time oiling as well. <laughs> Most of your pistons are going to have an arrow. The arrow points toward the exhaust side of the engine. So in this engine, the exhaust is going to be over here on this side. So this arrow is going to point forward. So as we install this piston assembly, we want that arrow to point that direction. The uh, reason that I could not install this earlier is because I did not have this wrist pin bearing, which slides into this connecting rod and then the pin slides through it. So as this piston slides around in here, the there's a bearing inside of that area that allows it to pivot smooth and easy. Your automotive applications generally don't have that. One of the things I kind of want to take a look at before I install this is that this bearing fits reasonably well within that piston. Now this engine had cageless bearings when I took it apart, meaning that it did not have this aluminum cage. The bearings were just packed all the way around this rod, and when I took the pin out, they all fell out, because I didn't realize it had cageless bearings until after I got it apart. Now with those cageless bearings, what they had were washers that sat on either side and held the bearings from flopping side to side on the pin. So these rode on the pistons, and they kept the pins inside the rod. We don't have room for those with these pistons and wrist pins. So what we'll do is getting ready to assemble this, I'm going to go ahead. Everything looked like it fit together well. Everything's nice and clean still. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of two-stroke oil in that rod end and drip it everywhere. Install the bearing, roll it around a little bit, which is going to get oil everywhere. Pull a little bit more oil inside. Really want to make sure all the metal surfaces in an engine you're assembling get coated with oil. You don't want to have any dry metal when you're assembling an engine. By that I mean we don't want anything that is moving to be dry. Like our gasket surfaces, we don't want oil on those. So like this little gasket surface that I already spilled oil on, I'm going to have to clean that off better before we put the gasket in. But we don't want any of our movement surfaces, which this is going to be a movement surface. We don't want any of those to be dry. And you can look up inside of here, these are actually little oil holes for the pin themselves. Now when I go to install this, what I'll do is I'll start the pin into the piston first, because sometimes they're a little tricky to get started. Assemble this down onto the rod. Okay, and just slowly slide 
the pin into its home. Now comes the super fun part of installing this C-clip. So the C-clip, again, we want this gap to go straight down or straight up. We never want it to be sideways. Where the groove is for removing this pin, we want it to go straight down. Oh boy, this is going to suck. So I'm just kind of muscling that one in there by hand. One of the things I like to use to try to finish this off is just kind of a clean socket. Because they're smooth, they're relatively close to the right shape. They're not going to damage anything. And as you can see, I'm kind of working that one in there. The piston is chamfered, so once you get it started, it does go in pretty easy. And that circlip is now almost installed. There we go. That last little click you may have heard was this end popping into place. Now you just want to watch, make sure that it fell into the groove that it locks into all the way around. Because if it's not in that groove, once it gets running, it's going to shoot out of there and then you're going to have major issues. So I'm going to set that one off to the side. We'll go ahead and spin my engine over. Maybe. Okay. So I'll repack these things in case I lose the C-clip. And I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. Now our C-clips are installed in both sides. So I can go ahead and pull this wadding out of here. I'm going to use a little bit of brake clean again. I'm going to clean up these surfaces where the base gasket is going to go. I don't want any oil on there because that shouldn't really cause a big issue with the seal. But I'd rather not chance it. Now when it comes to the base gasket itself, you'll get a kit, and generally, generally when you get a gasket kit, you'll have three different sizes. So I've taken and I've measured these with a micrometer, which I don't know if you can see. Um, so I measured these all with a micrometer, and I wrote down their thickness in inches. So we've got a 16 thousandths, 20 thousandths, and a 25 thousandths. Now the way that Skidoo has their service information set up, there are, if you're dealing with a general two-stroke, there are usually a couple different ways this can be measured, and this is going to be called squish. It affects your port timing and your compression ratio, and it's kind of an important thing. Now, because of the way that Skidoo has this set up to measure it, and the only reliable specs I can find for this engine are from Skidoo, I really don't have a way to measure this one. So I'm going to go with the 20 thousandths, which is right in the middle. Um, this effectively, this gasket effectively changes your port timing, as well as your compression ratio, which are both kind of a critical factor in a two-stroke engine. So we'll go ahead, we'll line that one up. Now, this is the cylinder that I sized for this ring. It's all, right now it's, it's clean, but it's dry. I'm gonna take a little bit of two-stroke oil Kind of shove this back a little bit. Again, I'm going to take a little bit of this two-stroke oil and run it around inside the cylinder. You don't want to get it up on the O-ring ring area, but you want to coat the entire cylinder. And again, this is any moving part inside an engine. You don't want it to be dry. 
So this one is freshly honed. It's got some pretty good grooves. It's going to hold oil pretty well. I'm going to flip it on its side and get this bottom area where oil is running down to. Now if you're watching me assemble this and you're watching a bunch of oil get put everywhere inside of this engine, what do you think it's going to do on the first startup? It's going to smoke like crazy. So along with oiling up the cylinder, I'm actually going to come back here and I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the piston skirts itself. I'll start up at the ring groove area. Trying not to get this on the gasket surface. I'm just going to oil everything about this whole assembly just lightly. I just want a coating of oil on it. Actually what I'm going to do is take this and spin it so we've got the piston I'm working with all the way up and the other side all the way down. So now I've got my light coating of oil over the entire end or over the entire piston area. When we go to install this, in the other video I showed you the pin. I've got it marked with a marker from the last video, which is where I was checking my port alignment. We've got to make sure that the end of this ring stays on that pin. So what I'll do is I'll line it up. I'll simply squeeze the ring with one hand. Grab the cylinder with my other hand, Oops. and I'm just going to run that down and slide it into place. Okay, so now I've got that piston all the way installed, kind of. So I will grab my jug bolts, the bolts that hold this down. And I'm just going to get all four of them started. Now some engines will actually have an alignment dowel on this area too, so it lines the jug up perfectly. Um, this one actually has them machined into the case, but it does not have them machined into the cylinder. So I'm not really sure why they did that, but that's the way this particular engine is. And for right now, I'm actually going to leave these kind of loose. I'm not going to tighten them down because I still want this gasket and everything to be able to move if it needs to. So I'm going to leave that loose. I'm going to go ahead and oil up and install the other cylinder. So now I've got both cylinders loosely bolted down, but they still move. And there is actually something that I didn't do. Um, ski -Doo has you add some anaerobic sealant to the base gasket. I didn't do that. It'll be, it should be fine. But here's where I, our next step is actually going to be. The next step is putting the exhaust manifold on. So that seems a little bit weird, but these things are free to move around quite a bit. And by setting the exhaust manifold on, we're actually going to align everything. So we'll go ahead, put the gaskets in place, 
get our bolt started. This exhaust manifold on this engine is pretty nasty, so I'm going to have to wash my hands after this step. But, should be able to get this started without too much issue. Okay, so I'm going to start the outer two bolts because they're easy to get to on both sides. Okay, so I got those two started. So by tightening these bolts up, what we're doing is kind of aligning these cylinders and putting them all into the same uh, spot. So these are six millimeter, at least the ones that I have. I'm gonna start in here in the center where they're hard to get at. And maybe, actually these are really hard to get at. So I'm just gonna snug these up. And I may have to trim my wrench. So I guess I'm not going to start in there. I'll start on the outside. And just snug these things up. And that's going to pull these cylinders into alignment. Alright, so I'm going to have to trim down a allen wrench to get that back in there deep enough to actually really tighten these but they're snug enough for right now and what that has done is made this all one combined unit now these cylinders are going to get tightened up in a crisscross sequence to 21 foot pounds Maybe I better snug them a little bit more first. Now these bolts inside here, there's two in the front and then two exposed on the back. They're going to get tightened down to 21 foot-pounds. Okay, so there's one. We're just going to use a crisscross pattern here. Just like tightening down a four lug wheel. We're going to do this with the shortest extension I can. So, I mean, maybe I could have done like an inch shorter, but I don't have an inch shorter. So we're going to do this with the smallest extension that we can. Come back to the first one. Move on to the next cylinder. Oops, inside. So I guess this is a good spot to talk about the base gasket a little bit more while I'm prepping this cylinder to have the uh, head put on. Um, there's just O-rings that go into the cylinder surround and the head surround. But the, uh, the base gasket, what it does is it's kind of, uh, well, it has like, it... so the thickness of the base gasket really has two different functions in this engine. One of them is when the engine comes up to top dead center, right there, the distance from the piston to the top of the liner, and then into the head itself controls the squish or if you look at the way this dome is made it kind of angles up and when it comes up to top dead center it creates turbulence and helps it burn better um, that's one of the things you're doing there the other major impact you'll have with the base gasket thickness and I say major but it's probably not really all that major but the other thing that you do is you've got these ports. Let me grab a light. In a two stroke, you've got ports, which are your intake and exhaust. 
if you uh, are more familiar with a four stroke type of design, you can kind of think of these as your camshaft. So with the um, with the base gasket, one of the things that it actually does control to a certain extent is how high these ports sit. And I can't get the light to freaking sit. There we go. So it does control how these ports sit. So it can move your port timing up or down. It doesn't change the shape of the part, port, but it changes it up and down. So if you think of it like a camshaft in a four stroke, it's kind of like advancing or retarding the camshaft, which changes where your power is made. Now, if we're talking about a two stroke engine that has a much narrower band where it makes power or it's power band, changing that port timing can actually have a pretty big effect on how the engine runs. And in a snowmobile like this with a CVT, your clutching has to be set up to run with that with where your engine makes power. So it does have an effect. So like I had said earlier, I'm kind of guessing on this one because I don't have a good way to check it. Now there are some engines where you can actually measure the squish distance on the piston dome here up to the head. And if you've got a spec for that, that's great. This engine, I don't have a spec for that. The only spec that I can get is to, once the head is installed, measure the volume above the piston and within this dome. And then that's where Skidoo gives you a, a spec, and that's the volume spec for the engine. So I have to, in this case, I would have to fully assemble this engine, check it, and if it's wrong, undo the top end, take it off, change the gasket, and do it all over again. I don't have the equipment to test that anyway. So really, I can't come up with a squish spec, and I don't have a way to actually measure my chamber volume once it's all assembled. So I'm taking a guess, and my guess is to go with the, the middle size one. Now, because this is a trail engine, it's not really a real high performance unit, that middle guess is probably going to be fine. Uh, if I was trying to build a race engine, I would be a lot more concerned with that, and I'd probably have different specs. As well. We've got the O-ring set. Like I said, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a guess on the uh, base gasket, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to go ahead and set my cylinder head down in place. should make sure before you do that that your O-rings are all set properly, and these ones look to be good. So I'm just going to set my head down in place. Now there's three seals that go on this head itself. There is the outline seal that goes around the outer edge. And then there are O-rings that go around each spark plug hole. The next spot that you're, or the next thing that you're going to do is going to go ahead and take the actual cover itself. And when it comes to head bolts, you've got two different lengths. So if you look at these, these are two different lengths. The two short bolts, there's only two short ones. They're going to go in lined up with the exhaust. Okay, so just like the... Just like the base gaskets or the jugs, these are going to get torqued to 21 foot-pounds as well. And... And just like everything else, I like to go over the pattern second time oops obviously there's still more left to do on this engine but that covers the piston cylinder cylinder head assembly and the exhaust manifold so thanks for watching.
hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. And I'll see you later.